Johnson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Speed Gibson, Clint, and Barney are drawing close to their destination of Hong Kong, China to arrest, if possible, the number one criminal of the 20th century, the octopus. The first clue that the boys have as to the criminal's headquarters is on a small, barely legible map which Marsha Winfield's brother sent her prior to his mysterious disappearance. During a sightseeing tour on Guam Island, one of the octopus spies fails in an attempt to recover this map. The octopus learns of the failure and determines to stop the pursuit of the International Secret Police in Manila. Meanwhile, Speed, Clint, and Barney have decided to show Manila to Marsha and little Jean. We find them in a colorful cafe. Well, Jean, what do you think of Manila? It's wonderful, Clint, but so mixed up. All sorts of people live here, don't they? Yes, the Philippines, or the Thousand Islands, as they were once called... A sort of a melting pot for black, yellow, and white. That's what makes it so colorful. Manila's Chinatown with its narrow streets and overhanging balconies, the ruins of Spanish buildings and the old forts and the canal. You know, of all the places we've seen on our trip, I think that Manila is one of the most interesting. But the weather's sure hot, isn't it? Kind of sticky. Oh, you're so used to the comfort of the China Clipper that you're a little spoiled for land speed. You're a true aviator, all right. I hope so, Miss Marcia. I'm trying hard to be. Don't tell me you fly, too. He sure does. The kid has all the makings of a bird man, Marcia. Barney's teaching me. I soloed a lot already. Goody. When will you take me up, Steve? Oh, you know, wait a minute. Hold on, young lady. Haven't you spent enough time in the sky during the last few days? But Speed wasn't flying the clipper, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> Will I have a few more hours in the air, Gene? Then I'll take you up for a ride. But I still have a lot to learn. Not only flying, but I'm studying everything else that'll help me to be a really good secret policeman. Radio, telegraphy, criminal law, fingerprinting, and a book on the art of makeup. Clint told me to learn that by heart. Then he'd give me some real experience of making people up. Isn't makeup rather a new thing in criminal capturing, Clint? Oh, in a way, Marcia. Everyone has read about the old-time detectives who wore everything from false teeth to false faces when shadowing their quarry. But the more modern type of makeup has taken a hint from motion pictures, and the result is far more realistic. Now, as an example, would you think that I had on a disguise now? No. Of course, I've never seen you any other way, but I can't imagine you looking any different than you do now. Then let me tell you, Marcia, if Clint took his makeup off now and you was to pass him on the street, you'd never recognize him. Oh, I'd know Clint. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Someday I hope I can get as good as he is on that stuff. It's one of the most important things in detecting. Whatever started you on this career of yours, Speed? Growing up around Clint most, I guess. Wouldn't want to be a better guy than him. Nobody could be better. Oh, oh, oh now, wait a minute. <laughs> You'll have me blushing. But here. it's true, Clint. If I was going to tell Miss Marsha all the things you've done for oh, me... Now, now, spare her the lurid details. She's probably wondering, if I am so smart, why I ever consented to bring you along on such a dangerous mission. Well, I presumed it was because Speed could help you in your search for the octopus. Oh, he's helped, all right. In fact, he's done most of the work so far. Speed is here because Chief Riley, head of the secret police, insisted on it. You see, back home, Blackie Spears, one of the octopus gang, broke into our rooms in an effort to find the key to our police code. Well, Speed knocked him out, so the chief decided it would be safer to send him along with me. Swore him into service, and <laughs> well, here he is. And I wouldn't have missed all this for anything. I just hope we capture the octopus. Me too. I ain't forgetting that guy played me a dirty trick while I was flying his bullet plane and almost ended my promising career. And on top of that, one of his gang gives me this black eye at Guam. I'll send him into a nosedive if I ever get my hands on him. That man is terrible. He's a danger to the whole civilized world. His smuggling alone is sure giving China a headache. Well, I'll say. The Chinese government wants to put a stop to the dope smuggling. Well, the worst of it is that the octopus doesn't confine himself to one brand of criminal activity, but dabbles in every form of it. You've been on his trail before? Yes, I first came in contact with him about ten years ago in South America. He was in politics then, stirring up the natives to revolution. For his own gain. And the secret police ended that racket. 
But the leader, the octopus, escaped. Have you ever seen how he looks, Clint? Uh, no, Jean. You see, he always wears a black silk mask. Well, yes, we did catch a glimpse of him once in that mix-up, but that was all. Yeah, I think the guy sleeps with that mask on. Well, he's always escaped so far, but he won't this time. The world isn't big enough for the octopus and me. One of us won't be in it after the smoke clears away. Now, I promise you that. Hey, what is this, a lecture? I'd like to see more of Manila. Yes, there are all sorts of historic places around here. And the streets are so colorful, the main one's so modern, and the side streets so quaint. The lady wishes to see Manila. Lottie, good guide. Hey, who's this guy? Uh, my name, Lottie. Good guide. Show you all four. Oh, no. No, thanks. No, we don't want a guide. Oh, gee, Clint. Can't we use him for a little while? It's early yet, and he could take us places that'd take us a long time to find, maybe. Oh, yes. I'd love to see Manila. Looks like you're outnumbered, Clint. I'd kind of like to take a look-see around this burg myself. Uh, what about you, Marshal? Oh, I'd love it. Huh? <laughs> I'm not keen on picking up a strange guide like this, but oh, I guess it won't hurt anything. Lead on, Lodi, old kid. <laughs> oh, what a name. He'll hear you, Barney. No, no, he's some sort of foreigner. He can't talk good English, let alone understand it. This way, please. Say, he's not taking us out the way we came in. <laughs> Here. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on, Lucy. Where are you taking us? Outside entrance, closer to Old Port. See more of Old Town. Oh, no. No, this cafe is enough of Old Town for me. Uh, I don't want to see anything any older. Oh, come on, Clint. This is swell. Oh, yeah, please, come on. Clint. Uh, all right, then. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Say, this street is so old that it's dead. There ain't a person in sight. Only Filipino people live on this street. This is our food. They inside eating. Ah. Well, still want to go through with this, Marsha? Oh, yes. This is exciting. Hold on to my hand, Jean. Don't worry. I am, Marsha. This place is kind of spooky. Plenty dark, all right. The lights are awful dim. What's that coming toward us? A carreta, little one. A wagon. Uh, we must step aside to let it pass. Here, here, in this doorway. Say, this building looks like an old church. It is one of the Spanish churches. Hey, Barney. Barney, that door is opening. Huh? Yes, fella. This is another ambush. Loti is a member of the octopus band. I'm sure of it. Suffer and wang doodles. What'll we do? Uh, the Carreza. It's our only chance. No telling how many men are behind this door. When that wagon gets to us, you take Jean, I'll grab Marsha, and into the wagon with him. And we'll ride our way out of here. Good enough. It's almost here now. What about speed? Uh, he'll follow us. I'll give Loti a shove as you pass him. Leave him to me. Wait. Here comes the wagon. Now. Stand ready. We must go inside church to allow wagon to pass. Oh, yeah? Take this to remember me, but. <laughs> Quick, into the wagon, Marsha. Jean's in already. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, I'll, I'll give you a hand. Off you go. There you go. Grab the reins and get out of here, Bonnie. Yeah, man. Move over, my friend. Get up there. Come on, get up. Golly, look at all those guys coming down that doorway we were standing yeah, in. That was another ambush, Steve. Another minute we'd have been inside that church and... Probably we've never been heard of again. Oh, how horrible. What a risk we ran. Oh, I didn't like the look of it from the beginning. I know. We talked you into it, Clint. Boy, after this, what you say goes. Hey, where do you want to go in this karaoke or whatever you call it? Well, get back on the main street and then head for the hotel, Bonnie. We've seen all of Manila we're going to. I was in the wagon before I knew what was happening. <laughs> hey, look at the driver. He sure doesn't know what's happened. Sitting there staring at us like we were crazy. He's right, too, if you ask me. Anybody else want to drive? No, no. You're doing a good job of it. Now, wait. Now, slow down a little. We don't want any accidents. And we're nearing the main street again. It hardly seems possible for such a thing to happen so near the heart of the town. Anything can happen when the octopus has a say in it, Miss Marcia. Vanilla's swell. I'll feel a lot better when we're flying in the clipper again tomorrow. Yes, sir. We can't take off too soon for me. Well, it won't be long now, will it, Clint? It's only a short hop between Macau and Hong Kong. It's a short hop, but the two ports are vastly different. Macau is under the Portuguese authority, while Hong Kong is British. I'm awful excited. So much happened in Guam and Manila. Seems like the closer we get to the octopus, the more adventures we have. Yeah, that's because he's doing his best to stop us, Steve. 
Well, have you recovered from last night's excitement, Marcia? Oh, somewhat. But I had nightmares all night. I thought I was being dragged into old churches and forts, and I seemed to see the octopus everywhere. Not as a man, but as a sea monster. Well, I'll breathe easier when we arrive in Hong Kong. Jean will be safe with her father, and I hope that we can arrange some safe quarters for you, Marcia. You leave the search for your brother to us, won't you? Oh, I can't. Clint, you know that. Look. There's Hong Kong now. Oh, look at all those funny boats down there. Chinese boats. Barney's doing a loop for us. Guess he's glad to get here, too. He better not try any stunting over this port. The port authorities will ground him in a hurry. Gee, this has been a swell flight. I think the China Clipper is, well, colossal. I can't think of a better word. And you're right, Steve. One couldn't ask for anything better than the Clipper trip. Everything has been perfect. The flight itself, the stopover accommodation... It would have been heaven if we hadn't had our main problem to contend with, the octopus. Well, now that we're almost on his home ground, I think we'll have a better chance of striking back, Marcia. I really I think... pardon, Mr. Barlow. Hmm? Oh, yes, Stuart. A message for you, relayed from our Hong Kong station. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, well, I'll be... What does it say, Clint? Is it bad news? Read it, Clint. It says, welcome to Hong Kong. I guarantee you a lively visit and a short one. The octopus. 